how much did being around Bob Marley impact your approach to music and the work ethic you had towards your work? Working with Bob, I was able to stand in the background and watch him and watch how, you know, this man, how he has written his songs. And I, I saw, I saw Bob had a, same, Bob had a passion that he must, what I was noticing, I was saying, but this man, he doesn't take a break. He's always creating another song. He's always recording another album, but it's as if he, something was driving him that he had to complete everything at a particular time. He, he never took a break. The only break you would see Bob would take is playing football, you know? But I, I never saw him going out shopping you know what I mean? <laughs> I never saw that people would go shopping and whatever. Bob would be always creating, creating music. And he had a discipline, discipline. It must finish, this must complete at a particular time. This must be released at a particular time. But I think what Bob was doing in his mind was preparing his legacy for generations and generations to come. So he never wasted time. I never saw him waste time. I never saw him gallivanting, you know. He was always in the, we come off, we are on tour, and we would come off the stage, get in the bus, get to the hotel. As soon as everybody is, in their comfortable clothes. We have to go to Bob's room, musician and all, to rehearse, to rehearse some upcoming songs, some songs that has not been recorded as yet. It was always, so when you saw that, you see that time in time for him was, was um, time was at stake time because to me he had to complete and finish his work at a particular time. How, how rough was tour life back then? Because it's a bus across Europe you're dealing with, right? Yeah. How rough was those how rough were those tours on the body? It took a toll, but let me tell you something. What I learned from Bob and I think what Bob learned from Alan was that you have to stay, your body have to stay fit. So you have to continuously exercise. When we would, um, say for instance, we would fly from a three month tour in America and we landed in Europe. The first thing we look for is a park. Where can we find a park? Because we need to run. We need to jog. We need to get this air out of our lungs you know, and, and refresh our lungs with fresh air. Um, we eat properly, you know, and there was, when you look at the table, the table had everything that was nutritionally right. All the vitamins, the table had laid out with vitamins, laid out with um, fruits and vegetable, you know, all the things that to maintain the structure, it was there. So that I think is what kept us and also our belief that we were on a mission. We were not ordinary people out there on a tour um, allowing people to dance. The music wasn't dance music. The music was teaching was information and, 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 and um, education, you know? So um, it was us focusing on the Bible. We read our Bible, we ate well, so we had the spiritual, 
we were growing spiritually. And that was what Bob was giving to the people. Because I believe what Bob was doing was not something that anybody could just get up and do. He was moved by the Spirit of God to do what he's doing, to do what he did. And I also believe, I also have heard like prophets from the United States come to Jamaica and they would say that Bob was a prophet. Bob was a prophet sent from God. You know, because a lot of things, when you listen to his prophetic declaration in his music, they come to pass. If you look at what is happening now, there's a natural mystic, you know, in the air. And if you listen carefully, this may be the first trumpet, this may be the last. But many more is going to suffer, many more is going to die. And when we read the Bible, there's a lot of things that are going to come up on this earth where the Bible tells us that, and we are in that time now, where earthquake in diverse places. And we are seeing so many earthquakes all over the world. You know, famine, famine. Um, there are some countries now that people can't find food to eat. Exactly. And people just have to read the Bible for themselves because His Majesty, His Majesty told us that in the Bible we will find the truth for ourselves. And we should read the Bible. And I think that was one of the greatest things that he could have said because in the Bible he says you will find the truth for yourself. Men sees their hopes and aspiration crumbling before them. And they don't know where to go. We are in that time now. They don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. They don't know who to look to. But the Bible, he says, in the Bible, we will find the truth.